welcome to big data thoughts today we are going to look at spark low level apis one of them is rdds so in the past videos we have looked at uh, uh, spark high level apis data frames data sets but today we are going to delve into uh, lower level apis so there are two of them but today we are going to talk about rdds in detail so first let's recap the different types of APIs that Spark offers. So if you look at Spark, it has structured APIs and lower level APIs. Structured APIs are nothing but data sets, data frames, SQL. These are higher level abstractions, which makes the developer's jobs very, very easy. Now, if we want as a developer, we want more control or we want to do things which uh, where we actually need to play with lower level APIs, then we will use RDDs or distributed variables. What are low level APIs? Let's first talk about it. So there are two sets of low level APIs. So one of them is RDDs that we are going to look at today, which is resilient distributed data sets. So anybody who works in Spark actually knows about RDDs because they are the fundamental unit of Spark. So that is also, so RDDs are also known as lower level APIs. For uh, then the second category is for distributing and manipulating distributed shared variables. So there are two types in that broadcast variables and accumulators. This is mainly, these are like consider them as variables that needs to be shared across your worker nodes uh, and your program wants to use something which is shared across multiple worker nodes, multiple tasks. Then uh, we use distributed uh, shared variables like broadcast variables or accumulators. Uh, one of the question that comes up is if we it is easier to use higher level abstractions or structured APIs, why would we even need to use lower level APIs? So like I said, if we need some kind of a functionality that cannot be found in the higher level APIs. For example, let's take an example that we need a very tight control over the data placement across the cluster. If we are using higher level or structured APIs, we don't have that control. There is a data transfer that is happening. There is a uh, way the data is getting stored on actual physical machine, which is the worker node where the task is executing. Now that is not something that we can control using higher, higher level or structured API. We are just operating on that data, but we don't know on which worker node or which uh, uh, machine actually the data is stored so if you want to control that then we have to use lower level apis if there is some legacy code base uh, that was written using rdds or lower level apis then how do we maintain that in that case we need to use low level apis or there is some custom manipulation so we have this uh, variables as i mentioned the broadcast variables the accumulators the variables which can be shared across worker nodes or tasks if we want to do some custom implementation on those shared variables, that's when we will use these lower level APIs. Now look, uh, let us look at RDDs in detail. What are they and why are they used? So first of all, what is an RDD? As I said, it's a basic building block of Spark. RDDs are resilient distributed data sets. That's the full form of RDDs. They were introduced in the primary API in the 1.x series of Spark. So they have been there since long. What and what do we mean by an RDD? RDD is nothing but a immutable partition collection of record, which can be operated in parallel. It is immutable. So whenever you do any kind of transformation action on that RDD, it will create a new RDD. That's how we also say that RDDs have this lineage because every time you perform an action, uh, a new RDD is created. It is not manipulating the existing RDD. So RDDs are set on stone, meaning they are immutable. So look at RDDs as two things. One, they are immutable. Second, they are a partition collection of records. So whatever data you have, if you chunk it, partition it, that one set, you can think of it as an RDD, which is immutable. Now, RDDs can be executed in parallel because you have chunked the data and you can actually execute them in parallel. Another way of looking at RDD is they are records. Okay, RDD is the records are just Java, Scala or Python objects of the programmer's choice. 
So if I choose to write program, there are multiple languages in which I can write program in Scala, in Java, in Python. So RDD is nothing but these are records which are Java, Scala or Python objects. The beauty or benefit of RDD is gives us complete control. Every record in the RDD is just an object. So you can manipulate those objects. You can store anything you want in that object in any format that you want. So you have complete control. RDD will be a collection, immutable data set, partition collection of records and every record is nothing but an object of the language that we have chosen. That's how we should interpret or look at what an RDD is. Now let us uh, talk a bit more about the internals of RDD. Internally, how does an RDD look? Like I said, it's a list of partitions. So every RDD is nothing but a set of records. Every record in that RDD is an object either of Java or Python or Scala. So you can consider it is a list of partitions. And it can also be said as it is a list of dependencies on other RDDs because like I said, RDD is immutable. When you perform action, it will create a new RDD. So you will always have this list of RDDs which are dependent on each other like a lineage uh, is there. A lineage will be created. A partition, um, a function for computing each split. RDDs can also be looked at a function which is used for computing each split. Each RDD is nothing but a split on the data. It can also be referred as a partitioner for key value RDDs. Okay, R, uh, now RDDs, when I say it is a, a collection of partitions, those partitions can be done by using hash partitioner or any other partitioner. Spark does that internally. And also RDDs can be looked as, as a list of locations on which to compute each split. Why? Uh, like I said earlier that you have better control. You can control how the data is physically located. So that's why internally RDD can be looked upon as a list of preferred locations on which we want to compute each split. Split is nothing but that whole set of records that each RDD constitutes. So that split or that list of partitions will go somewhere, right? One partition of data will go somewhere. You can control that. At a very, very lower level, when we talk about the Hadoop distributed file system, it can be the block location that we are talking about. So internally, RDD is a list of partitions. It has a dependency uh, created with one RDD pointing to another. It can be a partitioned Look, we can look at it as a key value partition data. Also, we can control the way the data is located. So these are some of the benefits or internals of RDD. RDD API. Now we just spoke about what an RDD is. But when we talk about lower level API, there is this API called RDD API. Now RDD APIs are available in both Python as well as Scala and Java in all of the languages that we usually write our program. There is a subtle difference now. When we talk about performance, Scala and Java will have almost similar performance. Okay, because most of the cost that is included, uh, most of the cost is attributed to the manipulation of the raw objects, but it is similar for Scala and Java. Now there is a subtle difference when we talk about Python. Python's performance will not be equivalent to Scala or Java. And why is that? It is important to understand that why Python will not be as performance efficient as Scala or Java. The reason is when we talk about Python, there is a lot of uh, substantial amount of performance um, that will be, I would say, uh, reduced. Why? Because uh, what, how does Python interpret? When we say we are writing a Python code, running Python RDD is actually running Python like Python UDFs. If you write a user defined function in Python and operate it row by row on the data, that's how RDD will look like. So what is essentially happening is first we have to serialize the data to a Python process, operate on it in Python and then serialize it back to JVM. Why? Because, and that is why the performance in Python is a bit less because you have to do these additional steps of serializing, operating and then again serializing it back to JVM. 
so there is a overhead in terms of python rdd manipulations which will not be the case for scala or java definitely so that's the reason we say python has a uh, difference in terms of performance as compared to java and scala now what are the different types of rdds there are two types of rdd one is a generic rdd type and the other is a key value rdd now key value rdd is gives you certain additional benefits like you have functions which are based on key aggregations by key etc so th these are the two types of rdd that are provided how do you create an rdd it's simple right like we in earlier videos also we saw how do we create data frame data set on a similar line now you want to create an rdd using a text file so what you are doing spark dot spark context dot text file and you give the path it will create an rdd for which in which every record in the rdd represents a line in that text file so every line will represent a record in the rdd so that's how rdd is created what are the different types of transformations that we do on rdd there are multiple transformations that are available like distinct filter map flat map sort random split this is just a few these are just a few examples it's not an exhaustive list but rdd has these kind of transformations available then there are multiple actions that are available like reduce count count x approx count by value count count by value approx min max take these are different types of actions that are available on that rdd now this whole uh, video was just to give you an overview of a low level api which is rdd i hope this has helped you to understand a bit more what an rdd is or how does a rdd rdd performance differ in uh, between java scala and python so in the subsequent videos we'll look at the other lower level api like distributed variables so thank you everyone for watching the video please like share and keep subscribing to the channel thank you